There was something that needed to be done for John the Baptist. And the person who can do that was Jesus. And immediately he fulfilled his part of the deal instantaneously. The Bible says the heaven opened. There was something John needed to get before he would leave the earth the last time. You remember the Bible says John the Baptist is the old prophet, Elijah. Elijah needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit and also the ability to go through his eyes, the third eye, which is connected to the metaphorical realm of the spirit. He need to get that and get the breakthrough. He was powerful. Without that, even when it, the spirit of God comes on him and he was operating on that. But when he came back to earth again, he didn't come back with that power. He came back on another route to, to perform another job. So he need to get that thing back before he go back to heaven. So it doesn't matter how he was dead, how he was he, he supposed to leave the earth. This is very important thing that he need to get in the second life of John the Baptist. He need to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with fire to open and activate the third eye that God has given to every one of us. You have it. I have it. Apostle Paul said about it in Ephesians that I pray that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. When Jesus came out from the water, immediately the Bible says, bam, the heaven opened. Who saw? John saw. The Holy Ghost descending on Jesus like a dove. The eyes of his understanding got opened. He got baptized in the Holy Ghost right there, filled with fire. Jesus baptized him with the Holy Ghost and fire right there and opened his spiritual eyes to see the realm of the Spirit. And the Bible says, he saw the heaven open. Who saw the heaven open? It's written there. John the Baptist. Because Jesus knows the heavens were good. He knows it because it was, a, it was a prophecy. But John didn't know that. He didn't have the, the revelation of that. So God has to open John's eye through Jesus anointing, the anointing of the Holy Ghost of fire and the eye, his eye, his spiritual eye to be open to see the realm of the spirit. Bam! It came to pass. And the Bible says he saw the heaven open and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. The same spirit descended upon those disciples when 500 people that God asked them to go and wait in the upper room and it's only 120 that went. 100 and 380 people did not show up. There are many of you that are chasing the goose for nothing. God is calling you into a worship of spending time in his presence so he can endow you with the power you need to do the ministry. But you've been going everywhere, doing everything, minus spending time with God. I beseech you that if you want to see the glory of God and the fire of God, quit running around and find time to spend time with the Lord. So God will minister to you. You know, people jump up. Oh, I'm going to pray for this person. Oh, I went to the hospital. Oh, so, so, and so person. Have you asked yourself that? Those people that call it you, before you leave, did God ask you to go and pray for the person or is somebody's? This is where we are getting ourselves into trouble. Let's stop running around, laying hands on people, going this prayer, praying that we don't even know what we are praying about. You need to know 
Before anybody asks you to pray, ask God, God, what is it? What is wrong with this person? How do I pray? My dude, that person is not your property. That person belongs to God. God is aware of the situation that you are being called to, to pray. Oh, I've made those mistakes some days, but now no more. If I don't hear a word about what I'm about to pray, I'm not praying. Because I don't want to pray my opinion. I don't want to pray my feelings. I don't want to pray what somebody is telling me and waste my time and energy. I want God to tell me precisely what is wrong with a person. And when he tells me how to pray, then I know there's going to be a breakthrough immediately. And I won't waste my time, my energy, and anything. There are certain things God will tell you, don't waste your time on it, because this person, this case, I'm not going to look at it at all, because it's, it's, it's beyond what you think. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something we need to... And I just wrote it, though, I said... The manifestation of the third eye opening. John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the water. But Jesus baptized him with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And not only that, gave him back what he used to have when he used to be Elijah. That anointing, that power that he used to have this time coming through the owner, the giver, the possessor of that power. He gave it back to him. It wasn't long. He died. But he got it. He got it. He got it. And he fulfilled his ministry. He did tremendous work. After this incident, and the Spirit took Jesus to the wilderness, as we all know, to face the devil on the metaphorical realm, where he stole from Adam the connections, which is the mind. The metaphorical realm controls the mind. That is your intelligence. I mean, yes, your mind and your intelligence and your ego. And that is where when you connect and the, your eyes of understanding open, you, the, the Jesus resurrected can visit you. You can hear him. We have, been, we have been taught to hang on with the Jesus that hung on the cross, not the resurrected one. And so we still feel sorrowful, we still feel uh, uh, sad because Jesus is still, what we know about Jesus is the Jesus that hung on the cross. And we have never been able to go beyond the cross and serve the resurrected Jesus, the one that have access on the physical realm where we live and also have the access to the metaphorical realm which is the world beyond us that we don't see that gave us the power to transcend into the realm of the spirit he is in control over there and then he's also in control in heavens where the spirit beings dwells the tree realm he has transcended all of them and so he can go he can he can be here in the minute and he's in heaven and he doesn't have the limit. There's no limitation from here to heavens and back in a speed of a light because God is light and there is no darkness in him. So he can travel in a speed of light. He's here in a moment he's there. That's why he can go everywhere and be in everywhere. Because he has overcome. He has been able to transcend beyond the limitations of the physical realm. Because when he died, 
He break through this. So there is a resurrected Jesus that can walk through your house and come and stand in a body form, a human body form of his body because he, he, as he came to live so he has a human body that is now accessible and is capable to come to you, give you a message and leave and go anywhere he want to go. That is what he is not sitting at the right hand of the father and doing nothing. As the Bible says, interceding. Yes, there are some times he need to go there and intercede for certain things that he need to let it accomplish for us. But he doesn't sit there 24-7. Ladies and gentlemen, he's going up and down in earth, preparing and doing and getting ready his bride. So we need to get out of the, of the mindset that we are, Jesus is hanging on the cross or he's sitting at the right hand of the Father and now beginning to serve the resurrected Jesus. Or seek to know the resurrected Jesus. This is what I want to bring to you. And it's very, very important that we learn to know this. This is why I took time to share this. So I'm going to share this. This is a food for thought that some of you need to ponder on it and meditate on it. And if you have any questions, when you hear this message, kindly give me a call and we can meet on, 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 the, on, the, on, on, on the Zoom uh, video and discuss this subject because a lot of you are going to say, what? What is she talking about? We need to hear more of it. Yes, I'm ready to talk more of this to open your eye to see where you are. We are in the era where we need to be able to, to get through. You know, I, I thought about prayer two years ago to some of you in Saskatoon, how to go through the tabernacle. When we got to enter into the holiest of holies, the Holy Spirit told me to stop because some of you were not ready and we stopped that teaching and we never got back because there are something that was not ready that has not revealed to me yet to take you cross the veil to get into the holiest of holies so we stop we never cross we never get through the veil but these are some of the things God is going to let us learn and take it from this level and be able to understand where we are and be able to get to the holiest of holies in your life. I am there. Thank God. To God be the glory. So I know what I'm talking about. And I want you to be there too. Because then you will understand the power of the salvation that Jesus has given to us. That he did not do unfinished job. He completed it. And why we are missing the missing link in our worship and our serving God, we will be able to connect and become powerful, purposeful, and be able to fulfill our calling, our ministry. And when our time comes and God calls us home, we will be faithful servant who has accomplished the purpose and the plan of God. May the Lord God bless you, prosper you, cause you to triumphant over every situation that you are facing in your life. I pray that this day shall be a day of victory, a day of power, a day of favor, a day of miracles, breakthroughs, things that has been so hard for you to access, you are going to access it in this day. I pray a prayer of breakthrough over your life, over your children, over your family. We are going to access the word. 
and study the word and live in the word and walk in the word and triumphant in the word. This is what I give to you today. God bless you. Pray for me as I pray for you. And may the Lord God keep you and prosper you. In Jesus' name, amen.